Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the 2014 Steamboat Days time capsule dedication. Thank you for coming out in the cold. We'll try to be brief. My name is Shane Corbin. I have the pleasure of being the Director of Planning and Zoning for the City of Jeff during this unique period in the city's history. Also has the pleasure of serving on the city's first public art commission and the 2014 Steamboat Days Advisory Committee. In the early planning stages of the Steamboat Days Festival, we decided to take the event in a new direction and add a major arts component. As thing turn, things turned out, the festival hosted the city's first juried art show in the newly completed Big Four Station. In fact, it was the first event to be held in the highly anticipated new park. City employees and volunteers were literally cleaning construction debris off freshly poured concrete while simultaneously setting up fine art vendor booths. It was an unbelievable setup experience. In addition to the vendors, food and music, the festival hosted multiple live art activities, including blacksmiths, aerosol muralists, glass blowers, stone carvers, a wood carver, a hat maker, community created steamboat stacks, and a community car time capsule. Today, today we seal that time capsule. The time capsule's designs were created from local artists and thousands of people from the public participated in carving them out during the festival. Each person also took away a small piece of the time capsule for a keepsake and signed uh, the time capsule as you see here today. Afterwards, a public call went out for ideas of what to put in the time capsule. It's been a very interesting process to sift through all of the ideas with the Public Art Commission and try to determine which items were most important to the year 2014. Today we are here to celebrate 2014 and seal this time capsule for a decade. We hope whoever opens it enjoys sifting through everything as much as we had putting it together. I'd like to give a special thanks to the festival's sponsors, American Commercial Lines, the Redevelopment Commission, the Jeffersonville Urban Enterprise Association, the City Council, and so many others who supported the event. It was a perfect way to celebrate all that's happening in Jeffersonville. Let's keep the momentum going. Thanks again. Now I'll turn it over to Councilman Sam. Thanks, Shane. A couple quick comments just about public art, public art in Jeffersonville. Uh, we, uh, we have City Pride, which has been going on for many years. And uh, so that's kind of, I'll say, one of our first efforts with that. And uh, we have a number of the folks from City Pride here today, and we appreciate all that you've done to get us to this point in your uh, collaboration with us as, as an art commission. Um, but in 2012, we did a study that, to try to look at public art in Jeffersonville to see what can we do more? Do we need to set something up and, and really try to spring forward that uh, for Jeffersonville? And that came back uh, extremely, uh, with a lot of energy, a lot of effort from folks that said, yes, we got to get something going even more than we have now. And so we established the Art Commission, which Ms. Spiker and Mr. Corbin is on. I see Melissa Deaverwood back here. She's she's on the commission. And then Jay Ellis is, is on the commission. It's a five-member commission. And for the last couple years, we've been trying to do, uh, I would say, baby steps. And many of you here have been very involved with, with that, and, and more, more so with, with Art and Jeff. I'm very excited about 2015 because uh, the city is contracted with Ms. Spiker and she's going to be our new public art administrator for 2015. Yay. And uh, I, I just think we're, we need to buckle our seat belts because we're, <laughs> you know, we, we've done a lot in, in a few years, but it's, I think we're, uh, we're in for a, a real treat for Jeffersonville. Uh, just one comment about what I think public art does for Jeffersonville or for communities in general. It certainly creates positive energy and any little project that we've done or that the other agencies or entities have done, it generates uh, a lot of energy. Uh, that's for sure we've seen that. It helps create certainly community pride and um, it helps create and enhance the self-esteem of our community. And then I think our community is seeing that we, with all the great projects that's going on downtown and all across the city, there's a lot more buzz and talk about that. So it's very exciting to, to be part of. And I would just say that we've only just begun. And uh, so I appreciate all your participation and all those that volunteer their time. It's, it's very much appreciated. Now I'll 
I'll pass it over to Ms. Spiker. Okay. Um, I'm Dawn Spiker, and I'm currently serving as a Jeffersonville Public Park Commissioner, as Nathan stated. I'm so excited and very honored and thrilled to um, go into a new direction, a new adventure for 2015, and serve all of you as Jeffersonville's Public Arts Administrator. Um, today, my task was to read the contributors list, so tell you basically everything that got packed into that time capsule um, last night and this morning with a lot of help of people in the crowd out here. So this time capsule will hold within its protective shell for the next decade all that has made Jeffersonville so unique in 2014. The contributions have been organized into four categories, being community, commerce, city, and schools. And those who contributed are as follows. In the community category, it was City Pride gave a volunteer t-shirt, Jeffersonville Arts Alliance, countless volunteer hours during Steamboat Days, articles on 2014 community art jam sessions, and a piece of embossed metal. Merrily Burnside, Jeff Running Man commemorative pin, Maggie Helton, Big Four Bridge photographs, Leslie Nephis, felted flowers from the community art quilt, Gail Parrish, actual photographs of Jeffersonville, as well as 263 photographs digitally archived. Her pictures include the Big Four Station, Jeffersonville Gateways, and the Bell of Louisville Bash from the Indiana side, among other things community related. Teresa Treadwell gave a Blackberry cell phone and an article on the history of Blackberry technology. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, and then for the category of commerce, American Commercial Lines was our presenting sponsor for Steamboat Days events and activities. Adrian and Company Bakery uh, contributed a t-shirt and pictures with the best cakes of 2014. Big Four Burgers happily gave a menu. Got about Gallery and Artisan Shop um, contributed a grand opening invitation, article, and a picture of the interior space. Who's your hardware? They were funny. <laughs> they, did a, they did an audio video CD, which I can't wait to see of the store and all the guys in the store. So if you know any of those guys, it'll be a hoot to watch it. Um, we've got Olive Leaf Bistro also gave a menu. Red Yeti, um, they also gave a menu and for about 20 to 25 minutes took it to the back and had everybody in the back put something very special on the very back of the menu. So they personalized it, which was really interesting. Uh, Shims Confectionery, Red Hots, and a history, a little handbill of their history. Silica Ceramic Studio gave a local love ceramic <laughs> ornament and the News and Tribune article of Miss America's visit to Jeffersonville. Anybody knew that happened? But, um, for, the, for the category of city, Mayor Mike Moore uh, donated his GCC Girls World Softball uh, Series softball with a team picture and a boat dock remnant. Jeffersonville Public Art Commission gave articles and photographs of 2014 public art initiatives, including approval and administration of the Time Capsule Project. The Redevelopment Commission um, graciously gave a digital archive with aerial footage of Big Four Station construction as well as architectural renderings and a written synopsis of redevelopment highlights by Kelly Phillips. Um, Urban Enterprise Association was another major sponsor of Steamboat Days events and activities. Parks Department, um, Sarah Schutz, Paul Northern gave a 2014 downtown event calendar. City Council, um, donated a district map and city council member bios. Planning and zoning, um, including Shane Corbin, who gave a Steamboat Days t-shirt and a program. Linda Mills, Mary Fry, and Dan Matson all contributed to the collection and preparation of news articles highlighting our economic and cultural growth of 2014. And thank you, Rebecca Neiman, uh, Pro Media Disc, with the city's 2014 website and all promotional videos was also included. And lastly, um, can't forget our schools, and Jeffersonville in particular, and many of you know Nancy Molnar, good old Nancy came through, with 2014-15 athletic calendar, 2014 school newspaper, the hyphen, the December issue, the winning boys tennis team picture, Greater Clark Schools directory, photograph of the Jeffersonville High School band that will be going to Carnegie in New York City, a photograph of the Jeffersonville High School theater performing Smokey Joe's Cafe, and a stuffed red devil. Wouldn't be complete without a stuffed red devil. <laughs> and then lastly, River Valley Middle School. Um, this was per a request that we got on Facebook, and I thought it was a really interesting request. Um, somebody suggested that students write some letters. So 
the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade art students completed a written vision of Jeffersonville, answering the writing prompt, what is your best memory of Jeffersonville, and what will the future bring for our community? So, as we leave behind, or as we leave 2014 behind in our memory, our hearts, and in this time capsule, let's look ahead to what Jeffersonville has the capacity to become in 2015 and beyond. Let's reinvent, reimagine, and be active participants in changing our community. And now, closing remarks from Mayor Michael.